Welcome to our discussion on nuclear reactions. Earlier we studied radioactivity, which involved a unstable nuclei that decayed spontaneously, naturally. Now we'll study an induced nuclear reaction that doesn't occur spontaneously. A nuclear reaction is a result of a nuclei being bombarded by a particle. And that particle can be uh, an alpha particle, a proton, a neutron, a deuteron, all sorts of things, or even another nuclei. Usually this particle that strikes the nuclei has to be going at a very fast speed in order to penetrate the nucleus of the atom and be able to overcome this potential energy barrier by the repulsive electrostatic forces. In a spontaneous nuclear reaction, you will always have energy being released because the total mass that you end up with will be less than the total mass that you started with. The very first nuclear reaction that was observed was by Rutherford in 1919, and this is shown right here in this line. Below, there are a few more induced nuclear reactions. And you can see that there's an alternate notation that we can write. This is the normal notation you'll see probably in the AP exam, but in some textbooks they use this short version here. The nuclear reactions that use this shorthand condensed notation um, utilize symbols of N, P, D, alpha, E, and gamma, which represent the uh, neutron, the proton or hydrogen atom, deuteron, uh, alpha particle and electron and then a photon or gamma ray. To find the reaction energy, so for example typically you have energy that is being re released in a reaction we use uh, Einstein's mass energy relationship e equals mc squared. So you need to find the change in mass, the, the difference in the mass that you um, started off with versus the mass that you ended up with. And if the mass decreases, then you have an exothermic reaction if the, that's giving off energy, usually in the form of kinetic energy. And if you have mass that is actually increasing, then you actually have an endothermic reaction. So once again, to find the energy released in a nuclear reaction, you use E equals delta M C squared. Delta M is called the uh, mass defect and it's really the difference between the reactant mass and the product mass. By the 1930s experiments involving the bombardment of a uranium um, nuclei by neutrons uh, sometimes split apart into smaller fragments such as barium and krypton and also releasing these free neutrons. This type of nuclear reaction is called a nuclear fission. Nuclear fission is the splitting of an unstable nuclei into two or more fragments. When the neutron strikes the uranium nuclei, the energy is absorbed and causes an imbalance between the attractive strong nuclear force and the repulsive electric force. The uranium nuclei will then begin to elongate and start to form a kind of a dumbbell shape and break into smaller fragments with the release of free neutrons. Many different fission reactions are possible for a given nuclei. Below is just a common textbook example that you often see. You'll notice that the uranium-235 is first bombarded by the neutron and then forms this unstable uranium-236 nuclei that will then spontaneously decay to barium and krypton in the release of these three free neutrons. Besides the decay of these two daughter nuclei, what I'd like to talk about right now is these three free neutrons. In the above reaction, we get three more neutrons that are produced, which in turn cause fission of two or more uranium nuclei. And this is caused to something what we call a chain reaction. So flip over to the next page in your notes. And there you go. A chain reaction is uh, caused by the fission of, say, uranium nucleus. And then when that one uranium nuclei 
is bombarded by a neutron. It releases these th three free neutrons. These are the two other daughter nuclei, which then will probably further decay into other things as well. But these three, three free neutrons will then could bombard up to two or even three other nuclei, producing, say, eight, and then 27 neutrons, and so on. And this basically causes a chain reaction. A chain reaction is like a self-sustaining reaction in which uh, one reaction event causes or stimulates more, one or more additional reactions that just basically keeps the process going. You should know on the AP exam what is nuclear fission and be able to describe this typical neutron-induced fission and explain why a chain reaction is possible. A uncontrolled chain reaction that just takes off is what we get in a fission bomb. To make proper use of a chain reaction um, and the energy released in that, we um, have to have some control mechanism. So let me just take a look at the down and lower in your notes now. In a nuclear reactor, we make proper use of this energy release in a fission reaction. What we do is we control the chain reaction. Um, in nuclear reactors, we have uh, two main things. We have moderators that are within the reactor, the fuel core. Um, and they basically help slow down these these um, neutrons because they're going they're highly energetic. So the the moderators moderators basically cause the neutrons to slow down so they won't likely cause bombard into another uranium nuclei and cause a chain reaction that could take off. We also have within the actual core we have of the reactor we have these rods that are inserted in here. And these are control rods that their main purpose is to absorb neutrons. So if you really want to shut down the reactor, you could just insert these rods into the reactor and absorb all the neutrons so that eventually the nuclear reaction would just come to a halt. And below this, we have the last type of uh, uh, nuclear reaction is the nuclear fusion. We have nuclear fission, which is the splitting of a nuclei into s smaller fragments. Fusion is when you get two smaller fragments that actually combine to form a larger nuclei. And there's an example shown here. A, a really good example to think of in terms of physically is, is really the evolution of a star. You get fusion that is, oh, is continuously happening in our sun. All right, that's all I want to say about nuclear fission and fusion and reactions. Uh, you can go ahead and practice doing the examples in your notes now.